and welcome to the Orthodox View, where we discuss the latest religious news from an Orthodox Christian perspective. I'm your host, Philip Champion. Patriarch Theodorus, also known as his divine beatitude, the Pope and Patriarch of the great city of Alexandria, Libya, Pentapolis, Ethiopia, all Egypt and all Africa, father of fathers, pastor of pastors, prelate of prelates, the thirteenth of the apostles, and judge of the universe, has given a rather interesting description of the Russian people. Here's what he said. Unfortunately, bears and jackals from the north, whom we Greeks Christianized, come in orthodox attire to steal and destroy. Patriarch Theodorus has also written a letter to the first hierarch of the Russian Orthodox Church, His Holiness Patriarch Kirill of Moscow and all Russia. Here are the demands of the Alexandrian Patriarch. Immediately revoke the so-called exarch and deprive him of his appointment. Otherwise, Patriarch Theodorus threatens to punish Metropolitan Leonid himself by, I quote, removing him from the high ministry of the high priesthood as required by the divine and sacred rules. Metropolitan Leonid of Klin, Patriarchal Exarch for Africa of the Russian Orthodox Church, wrote on his Telegram channel that in the south of Nigeria, in the state of Delta, with a population of almost 5 million people, all eight Orthodox parishes that were previously part of the Nigerian metropolis of the Alexandrian Patriarchate have joined the Russian Orthodox Church. According to various sources, there are only about 25 parishes in Nigeria. The exact number of Nigerian Orthodox parishes is unknown because the Patriarchate of Alexandria does not have complete data on the Orthodox population of its metropolises. Metropolitan Leonid writes that the decision of believers in Nigeria was not spontaneous. They were prepared by Father Matthew Imamezi, one of the first preachers of Orthodoxy in the state. He was also one of the first Nigerian priests to file a petition with the Russian Orthodox Church two years ago. Mr. Andrzej Zubertovich, a professor of sociology at the Nicolaus Copernicus University and an advisor to the President of Poland, believes that the West and NATO are ineffectively coping with the current situation in Europe because they have no moral orientation due to the loss of Christian values. Mr. Zubertovich believes that the answer to the question of how the weak can defeat the strong lies in the cultural and spiritual dimension. Here's what he said. The West is spiritually lost. It has lost the moral high ground it has had for the past two millennia. And it has forgotten the role of Christianity. The Israeli government is abandoning its plan to expand a national park onto church-owned lands and Christian holy sites in East Jerusalem. As planned by the authorities, the park, which has existed since 1970s, was supposed to include Christian shrines on the Mount of Olives. However, this decision was negatively perceived by all Christian denominations in the Holy Land. The Mount of Olives has a great spiritual significance for all Christians. For example, it was from there that the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ had taken place. Here's what the Christian leaders said about the National Park Expansion Plan. This is a brutal measure that constitutes a direct and premeditated attack on the Christians in the Holy Land, on the churches and their ancient internationally guaranteed rights in the Holy City. Under the guise of protecting green spaces, the plan appears to serve an ideological agenda that denies the status and rights of Christians in Jerusalem. The Roman Catholic Church is creating the first ever national network of independent institutes of Catholic thought at leading American universities. A grant of about $4 million has been allocated for the project. The project is called Illumina, supporting the Catholic intellectual tradition on campuses nationwide. The grant was announced on February the 1st. The Illumina network will include six initial members. Lumen Christi Institute at the University of Chicago, Nova Forum at the University of Southern California, Collegium Institute at the University of Pennsylvania, St. Anselm Institute at the University of Virginia, Collis at Cornell University, Harvard Catholic Forum at Harvard University. Here's what the program director of the Harvard Divinity School 
Tim O'Donnell has said about this. The grant will allow our institute to enter with confidence into a new phase of growth, expanding our impact on present and future leaders in science, scholarship and the professions. The grant was provided by John Templeton Foundation, a charitable organization that supports research and educational projects related to science, religion and spiritual life. Over the history of its existence, the foundation has allocated more than 3,000 grants for these purposes, totaling over $1.8 billion. Illumina will provide members with resources to grow their institutes organizationally and sustainably, as well as to develop programming and on-campus activities, focused specifically on the relationship between science and religion. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time on the Orthodox View.